Okay, in today's video, we're gonna be continuing looking at balance of payments trends. In particular, we're looking at how does net primary income affect the balance on the current account? In terms of the syllabus, we're still living in this third dot point. Okay, in our discussion of BOGS, we had a look at the story with Australia's balance of payments, in particular BOGS, how it's mostly negative, but has some periods of being positive, net primary income of being mostly negative, our situation of having a current account deficit, and then a capital and financial account surplus. So we're focusing here on how the situation of NPY, net primary income, will create a current account deficit. When we think about net primary income, we're thinking about the servicing costs Australia owes overseas. In particular, the servicing costs on foreign debt, so borrowing from overseas, are interest payments on loans. That is recorded in NPY. We also have servicing costs on foreign equity, so foreign investment into Australia. That is dividend payments and profits. So NPY is about the servicing costs of capital inflows onto the capital and financial account. How does NPY influence the balance on the current account? Okay, so just like with BOGS, we have cyclical factors and then structural factors. But here, there are a couple of cyclical, but just one structural. Okay, let's look at cyclical factors. Now remember, cyclical factors are those factors that are affected by the level of economic activity. Now, I know there's a lot of text in the slide. I'm going to try and work out a better way of presenting this. So let's look at the first factor, the value of the Australian dollar. What I would like you to think about is that the value of the Australian dollar will affect the value of foreign debt in Australian dollar terms. So, for example, a stronger, a stronger Australian dollar will decrease the value of foreign debt in foreign currency terms because the Australian dollar can buy more of that foreign currency. So if the Australian dollar is stronger, the Australian dollar value of foreign debt is lower, which will then reduce the value of interest payments, NPY debits, which will then reduce the overall NPY deficit and reduce the current account deficit. So this whole thing is known as the valuation effect, right? The valuation effect being where changes in the value of the Australian dollar will alter the value of foreign debt in foreign currency terms. So this is a little bit confusing, I understand. So you might want to pause this and have one more go over it. Just to reiterate in case it helps, the valuation effect is where an appreciation or depreciation of the currency causes an immediate decrease or increase in the Australian dollar value of foreign debt. That's straight from the textbook. Okay, another cyclical factor, sorry, another cyclical factor uh, is changes in domestic and global interest rates. So the servicing costs, interest payments, are set by an interest rate. So that could be an overseas interest rate in the country that's lending Australian money or the Australian interest rate. Now, let's say Australia borrows money from overseas and that the country's interest rates reduce. Okay, so this will decrease the value of interest payments required on Australia's foreign debt because the interest rate has reduced. So in turn, this will shrink the value of NPY outflows, reduce the NPY deficit, and the CAD itself. So the final cyclical factor is changes in the domestic business cycle. The way to approach this is to know that in Australia, about 40% of the share market is foreign owned. So if the domestic economy does well, companies record higher profits, then more money in terms of dividends will flow out of Australia to the foreign owners of those companies. So higher domestic company profits equals higher dividend outflows, which will then increase the NPY deficit and increase the current account deficit. So 
those were cyclical factors. Here's the one structural factor. So this is Australia's savings investment gap. So Australia has a small population and a relatively low national savings rate. This creates a gap between how much we'd like to invest, but how much we have in terms of domestic savings. To solve the SI gap, we borrow from overseas or we sell ownership in Australian assets. But both of these steps create future servicing obligations in the form of money that has to flow out from NPY in terms of interest repayments or dividends. So increasing NPY outflows, okay, that will increase the NPY deficit and the current account deficit. A quick application of this, let's say you ask, describe what would happen to the current account deficit if Australia increased its national savings level. Well, we know from the previous slide that low national savings creates a gap. So if we had higher national savings, that would shrink the savings investment gap, less need for capital inflow, okay, less need for, for outflows from NPY, reduce NPY deficit, reduce the current account deficit. Okay, a quick summary. Australia's NPY deficit is all about Australia's net servicing costs, owed overseas, higher capital inflows, okay, higher NPY outflows and a larger CAD. And the NPY deficit is due to cyclical factors and one structural factor, which is the savings investment gap.